some fresh faces in the starting lineup from Michigan. Mark Donald, the red shirt. Freshmen will tip it off with Joel Indondo for the Wayne State Warriors and also Zach Irvin, Derek Walton Jr., Karis LaVert, and Cameron Chapman round out the five for Michigan. And here we go. The Wolverines control the tip in the hands of Derek Walton. It'll be Walton over the freshman Chapman. Beeline running his classic motion offense to start this game. Donald High, pick and roll with Walton, Chapman. It'll be Levert with 11 on the clock. Walton fires for three early and doesn't get it to go off the rim. It'll be rebounded by Wayne State. All and in the hands the of Cameron summer, Bishop. All throughout the summer, Derek Walton worked on his shooting. Already we see a miss off the front end of the rim. So certainly will be interesting to see how he handles to that shot throughout the game. And Dondo misses on the other end and rebounded by Donald and Michigan looks to push the pace. Levert to Walton. Zach Irvin, the swingman who's put on about 10 to 15 pounds in the gym this summer. Levert into Donald and that's the first two points of the Michigan basketball season. That position for Michigan is gonna be key all season long. The young man, Mark Donald, he, he redshirted last year, so didn't get any playing time, but he's stepping into the starting lineup to try to fill the shoes left by Jordan Morgan, John Horford, and Mitch McGarry. Bishop is gonna get a foul called, and he's gonna get two free throws. Michael Lewis, number 20, is an Ann Arbor kid coming back home. Went to high school down the way at Huron High School. He's in the lineup for Wayne State. And Michael Lewis, one of the one of the best players on this Wayne State team. Great offensive ability, can score and finish around the rim as we see that jumper fall. He got injured last year earlier into the season, only played four games, averaged 11 points in those games. But coming off of a redshirt, coming off of an injury, he's poised for a big year. Levert inside, a good feed from Cameron Chapman. Spike Albrecht, backup point guard, junior leader, also in the game for Derek Walton. And Irvin, look out, here he goes, that's a slam. Zach Irvin early electrifying this crowd here at the Chrysler Center. If Michigan can use their athleticism to jump the passing lanes, get steals and easy buckets, they'll certainly, they'll certainly get out to a big lead here in this one. Albrecht hounding Bishop and Dondo. It's Gavin Toma with the left hand. Bishop, Michigan playing great defense here. Bishop pushes up a shot and it's rebounded by Irvin. Again, over the Donald, and it's intercepted by Toma with a two-on-one. Lewis to the rack, and he will get two free throws. We see a mistake there by Zach Irvin trying to force that pass. Michigan will definitely try to push the tempo throughout the game today to try to get those easy buckets, but just a little too careless there by Irvin. So a wide-open game early here. Both teams running. This, if this turns into a track meet, you have to say, Derek, that Michigan has the advantage. Absolutely. Michigan has such great athleticism, and they have so much depth that they can just rotate players in now who are willing to run all day in transition, push the tempo as fast as possible, and try to get as many easy buckets to get out to a lead. Aubrey Dawkins, son of Stanford basketball coach Johnny Dawkins and Duke Great, enters the game for Irvin. He's a freshman. Levert over to Chapman. It looked like Wayne State started in his zone and now has gone to the man-to-man. -man. Donald. Michigan holds the 6-4 lead early here at the Chrysler Center. Levert picks, pops, fires, nothing but the bottom. An absolute great individual ability there by Karis Levert. After the loss of Big Ten player there, Nick Stauskas, 
he is poised to take over as the leader of this offense. And Spike Albrecht gets the bench on his feet as he takes the charge. And that'll be Cameron Bishop's first foul. Entering the game now is Ricky Doyle, six foot ten freshman. They're gonna look to switch him and Donnell out frequently here early in the season. Dawkins. Hounded by a Wayne State defender. Holds his own and it'll be handed to Laverde who sets the offense back up. Karis Laverde plays the role of point guard a lot in this Michigan offense. Chapman. Yeah, Lavert does similar to how Nick Stauskas played for this team last year in high pick and roll situations. John Bielan will try to get his best player involved anyway offensively, and that's why we see Lavert playing points so often. As we're going to take a look at this charge one more time, John Bielan has to be happy with the way his defense is playing. Is that's back-to-back -back possessions, which his two leaders, Albrecht and Lavert have taken charge. Absolutely typical of John Beeline teams. He talked about players willing to take charges, sacrifice their bodies for the team, and already we've seen two here tonight. Chapman, a nifty move in the lane, and he gets the layup to fall. The lefty up and under looking like Kazzy Russell in this gym. Nindondo sizes up Doyle. Over to who? I believe that's Marcus Moore, and it'll be Michigan basketball. On um, the other side of this timeout. Cameron Chapman, the freshman from Portland, Oregon, has taken his talents from Oregon to Ann Arbor, and check this nifty layout here, Derek. Absolutely great athletic ability. He was Michigan's highest recruit coming into this year, already a freshman, getting a start for the Maize and Blue. An absolute tremendous finish around the rim there. He's going to make a huge impact on this Maize and Blue team come the middle of the season. Yeah, we'll see. Michigan. We'll see Ch Chapman play a lot of the four and the three in this Michigan offense because he has great athletic ability, can finish around the rim, but also has a great jumper from behind the arc. So we'll see him in that small forward and power forward roles for Michigan this season. Ricky Doyle couldn't have the pass from Spike Albrecht, and it'll be Wayne State ball. And that is Michael Lewis firing from three, and Albrecht pushing the pace on the other end to the rim. Left-handed layup for Spike. 12 to four, Wolverine. And again, Michigan just easy buckets in transition. Just so easy to push the tempo. They had numbers going forward. He had a three on two. He could pass if he wanted, but just the easy finger roll around the rim to, to extend this Michigan lead. Chapman goes for the steal. It'll be Miller on the baseline, spins up, can't get the roll, gets his own board, puts it back in. Really good effort from the Ann Arbor kid, Miller. Michael Lewis, excuse me. Doyle at the top of the key. Ricky Doyle, really big body. He's gonna work on his footwork here with Bakari Alexander and Levert. The star from the top of the key rings up another three. When Michigan gets Karis Levert into a high pick and roll situation, it's almost impossible to stop him. He has the choice to either drive to the lane because he's got the quickness to get by his defender or pull up with that great jumper of his to get that three points to make this game 15 to six. The great thing about Karis Levert is he can create his own shot. Absolutely. John Beeline talked this season about a go-to player who's going to get in that high pick and roll situations. We saw Trey Burke two years ago get in those, get those looks, and Nick Stauskas last year. So Karis Levert will have those opportunities this season for Michigan. John Draper sets up the Wayne State Warrior office, hands it up to George Spencer, and then to Gavin Toma, who's hounded by Derek Walton Jr., the all-freshman Big Ten player from last year. Spencer pulls up from 15 feet and buries a elbow jumper. A 
It's 15 to eight here early at the Chrysler Center. Ricky Doyle. Albrecht. Walton from the corner, and that's gonna be a three free throw opportunity for Derek Walton Jr. is Draper was wrapped all over him. So a few minutes ago, it looked like Karis Levert had gotten injured, but he's looking very good on the sideline. And entering the game right now is DJ Wilson, another freshman from Michigan. Yeah, DJ Wilson entering the game here for the Wolverines. He will play the five or the four for Michigan. Certainly a big man. John Beeline thinks he's a little raw as we see Karis LeVert get a little banged up on that collision with Gavin Toma. He appears to be okay now. But back to DJ Wilson, it will be interesting to see how he fits in this John Beeline offense because he doesn't have the offensive ability yet. So John Beeline is saying that he's got to focus on the fundamentals, finishing around the rim, and that's how he will get success. The Wayne State guards can't get into the lane as Michigan's pick and roll defense is very stout early. Spencer over to Wilson and it'll be Wayne State basketball with four on the shot clock. You mentioned Michigan's defense there on the pick and roll. What they do so well is when the pick comes, the guy who is being picked hedges the defense, hedges the ball handler. So it doesn't allow him any space to get by. Toma from the pocket. That's a two-point shot and a good catch and shoot from Gavin Toma. Toma's the only upperclassman on this Wayne State roster to return from last year. So he's certainly going to be a leader that they're going to be looking out for throughout this game and their season. Cameron Chapman fouled on the ground. He loves that left hand, Derek. Yes, he does. As we saw that nifty finish earlier in the game, we already see him being very confident going to the hoop and trying to finish around the rim with that strong left hand of his. Albrecht into Chapman. Albrecht, Chapman fires for three. That's the second time he's overshot a three-pointer, and that is Zach Irvin who doesn't miss anything all nylon. Absolutely, Zach Irvin is a volume shooter. When he, see, when he sees one ball go in, the, the hoop looks so much bigger after every single next shot. So look for him to be even more confident going forward. Albrecht with the steal at half court and a lefty layup, easy basket for Michigan. Michigan just doing so well to jump those passing lanes to get out easy transition buckets to extend their lead even farther here. Chuck Key, local kid from the Detroit, Cast Tech, DPS school system. DJ Wilson gonna get called for the blocking foul. Didn't quite get there fast enough. Michigan with a 23 to 10 lead. As you see, the junior, Albrecht, all the way to the hoop. Back at the Chrysler Center, we're going to look at Karis LeVert, who has an early couple points this game, and he sinks a three. And we're going to send it over to the third member of our team, Annie Sable, who has more on the junior. Well, Karis LeVert came to Michigan as a lanky 165-pound freshman. Two years later, the once lanky freshman has put on 35 pounds of muscle. has actually grown two inches. I spoke to LeVert before the game, and he just talked about how excited he was to start the season tonight. And now he and former ju and, uh, additional junior, excuse me, Spike Albrecht, are still getting used to their new leadership role on this team. I also asked him, come on, how much do you think about being drafted? He simply smiled and shook his head and said, not too much. I'm just focused on the game tonight. Back over to you guys. Thank you, Annie. And Derek, there have been a few Michigan basketball players in the recent past who've been thought about getting drafted. 
And those guys, Nick Stauskas, Mitch McGarry, Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway, can this team be as good as those prior teams with those superstars? Well, John Beeline is a great developer of talent. We saw those guys weren't highly recruited coming out of high school, and Karis LeVert wasn't either. His only offer other than Michigan was Ohio University. So he wasn't highly recruited, but John Beeline turns these players into perennial NBA draft picks. And we've seen, we've seen that work and have success in his first years in Ann Arbor, so I'm sure we'll continue. Zach Irvin misses on his first three. It'll be Draper on the other end. And you're right, Derek. John Beeline, Laval Jordan, Bakari Alexander molds these players, the guards, the big men in the front court, the back court, into stars and guys that can compete at the top level in the Big Ten. And that's a great testament to all three of them. It'll be off of Levert. Ten seconds left on the shot clock for the Warriors. Daniel Ball, number 44 for Wayne State, inbounds it. It'll be Toma from distance and out of bounds, Michigan basketball with 10.30 left in the first half. Wayne State head coach David Greer talked early on about how his team is going to be successful this year. And he said getting Gavin Toma into positions to be successful, setting him up on pick and roll or picks away from the ball to get him open shots is how this team is going to score. As we saw there, he missed that jumper, but that's what they're going to try to do. And that's exactly what they do as Levert finds Wilson, the 6'7 Wilson with a 7'3 wingspan for the two-handed stuff. On the other end, it's Chuck Key in the lane, blocked by Rockman, who has also entered the lane, and Zach Irvin will push the pace. Wilson, Walton, over to Rockman for the corner three, no good. Might have been a little bit of nervous there on his first collegiate shot, was a little too much power, and that one went just long. We've seen three pocket threes from two freshmen, it was Cameron Chapman and then that lone lesser by Rockman who've been way off the mark. The adrenaline is sky high tonight. As we just see DJ Wilson kind of force that shot and rush that bucket. A lot of freshmen getting their first playing time here for Michigan. Nerves are obviously going to come in your first half collegiate basketball. So kind of it's important to see how they progress during this game and see if they settle in more than they have in the first 10 minutes. Karis LeVert has done a really good job of controlling the offense. Derek Walton Jr. and he have got dished out great passes just like that one. Wilson again a little bit nervous. Can't finish on the lefty layup. On the other end it'll be Tristan Wilson who pushes the base and John Beeline can't be happy about that because his team just simply didn't even get back out of defense. And Tristan Wilson, the local kid, only a freshman from Ann Arbor Skyline High School, has great athleticism as we saw there getting out in the fast break, beating two Michigan players to finish easily around the rim. It'll be a Wayne State foul on the ground. Michigan will have it out of bounds on the baseline. Mark Donnell checks back in along with Cameron Chapman. Wilson will check out along with Rockman. But at least, and we're going to get the count here, 10 players already for Michigan have seen the floor. 10 players for Michigan and 10 players for Wayne State. So both teams trying to test different lineups early on in this one, trying to build chemistry. John Beeline talked about in his press conference this week how he was going to mix up the lineup, see who plays better with who. He said that some combinations work a lot better than others, so it's important to get them in different spots to try to build that chemistry and see which ones are going to be most successful going forward for the rest of this season. Do you believe Beeline will end up with three or four like lineups, five line or five person lineups when it all said and done? Yeah, he's certainly going to tinker around early on in the season. 
but most likely he's going to end up with eight or nine players that he's going to stick with for the majority of the season, especially when we get into conference play. And those eight or nine players are really going to be their go-to guys. Might not be starters, but just guys who can contribute off the bench. It's not going to be emptying up the bench as we might see early on tonight and for the rest of the season. But going forward, he will try to mix up lineups, lineups to try to find that best combination. Nindondo, the biggest body out there for Wayne State, misses on the fadeaway. Walton pushes the pace. Irvin pours up for three, can't hit. Wayne State looking to push. George Spencer. Nindondo back to Spencer, trying to penetrate the lane. Michigan hedging that screen again. Moore over to Toma, Lewis. They just can't find an answer to this Michigan defense. Nindondo. Toma into the lane, can't get it to fall and rebounded by Chapman, and that's gonna be a foul in the Michigan basketball. Yeah, Wayne State hanging around, they're being physical, not giving Michigan anything easy, and that's why we see the foul there against Cam Chapman. Chapman sinks the front end of a one and one as Michigan is in the bonus. Chapman sinks the second one, stretching Michigan's lead for 29 to 14. George Spencer running the point guard position, Gavin Toma. Lewis. As Moore slips, and Lewis will have to set it back up. Nine on the shot clock, and they haven't even gotten inside the three-point arc yet. Toma from way outside, can't get it to fall, and it'll be Wayne State basketball as that ball went out. Of, bounds off the hand of Derek Walton, and a fresh 35 for Wayne State. Just great defense by Michigan. They're just too long. Wayne State can't find any holes around them, making it extremely difficult for them to get any, any offense going. Draper with that teardrop head. Michigan bodies draped all over him. Couldn't get it to fall, but Wayne State will retain possession. Moore, Lewis thought better of shooting a three in the face of Zach Irvin. Draper, Moore looking inside, Lewis over Lavert can't get it to fall, and here come the Wolverines and Chapman. Derek Walton pulls up from the top of the key and drains it. Pierces the nylon for Derek Walton's second, or excuse me, first three-point basket of the night. And David Greer, the coach of Wayne State, just extremely unhappy with his point guard Draper, allowing Derek Walton that space to get that wide open. He was, he was never going to miss when he was that wide open from the top of the key. Mark Donnell and Ricky Doyle played great defense on Nintendo all night. Walton. Chapman looking to get into the lane. Lavert on Moore. This is a mismatch. Zach Irvin always looking for his shot. Four on the shot clock. Lavert over to Walton. A long corner three. No good. And here comes Spencer. Good defensive possession from the Warriors. Spencer can't get it to go. Lewis, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Derek Walton thought otherwise, but it will be two free throws for George Spencer. 
Walden Jr. picking up his second foul here. It looked to me as if he was going straight up and he wasn't in that semicircle. Could have been a charge, but with that second foul, he will come out and Spike Albrecht will replace him. Albrecht, the junior, he was just a freshman when he scored 17 points in the national championship game against Louisville and set himself for some national notoriety as Laverne up to Irvin! Zach Irvin takes the gravity out of the Chrysler Center. It is 34 to 14 as the Wolverines hold a 20 point lead over the Warriors here in the first half. Chuck Key handles the offense along with John Draper for the Warriors. Moore pulls up from the left side for three and drains it. Marcus Moore from Lansing, Michigan with the left-handed stroke from the left side. Marcus Moore, one of the four freshmen that head coach David Greer brought in this season to Detroit along with Tristan Wilson, Draper, and Chuck Key. Those four guys are gonna contribute greatly this season. Very interesting sequence here for Ricky Doyle. Albrecht stole the ball on the inbounds pay, and right before that, Doyle threw a nice dime to Irvin, got the rebound off the Levert miss, and pushed it, and pushed it back in. Ricky Doyle flying all over the gym right now. Yeah, John Beeline mentioned that Ricky Doyle has been hampered in fall camp by an ankle injury, but right there, I didn't see anything wrong with him going up strong around the rim. He just simply outsized the defender there. And that's Tristan Wilson, the Ann Arbor prospect, putting in a sky hook over Doyle. And another freshman there for Wayne State. Coach David Greer mentioned that if these four guys want to find playing time on the court, they're going to have to get after things on the defensive end. So Wayne State, David Greer stresses defense first. So if you're able to prove that you're a capable defender, that's how you're going to get playing time as a Warrior this season. We've seen here that John Beeline also stresses defense. They're up by 18 points right now and always wanting his players to improve. But fundamentals like blocking out are something that you need to preach here early in the season so they don't become a bad habit later on in conference play, especially in the Big Ten when you have big bodies all around. You got Wisconsin and Frank Kaminsky. Michigan State is always a great rebounding team. So it's, it's very imperative to stress that now so that when you get into conference play, your guys are ready. Frank Kaminsky of the Wisconsin Badgers, a preseason All-American. Wisconsin has almost every single one of their starters coming back, which would be a tall test for the Michigan Wolverines this season in the Big Ten Conference. It's going to be Michigan basketball. We're going to take another look at this last play. Yeah, DJ Wilson just called for goaltending there on that layup by Draper, just hitting it off the backboard after it already made contact with the backboard. Makes that a goaltending and two points for the Warriors. Rockman's going to end up with two free throws here. Possibly a one and one, actually. A chance for his first collegiate points. Can't convert. He'll have other opportunities. I'm positive of that. And both Rockman and Aubrey Dawkins were two late signees for Michigan. Both of them committed late in the summer, around June, so not having the same time that the other guys did to get accustomed to this Michigan offense. But both are going to contribute for the Wolverines this season. The Wolverines took a trip to Italy this summer, as that's a travel on Gavin Toma. It's going to be Michigan basketball. Derek, how much do you think Beeline squad benefited from that trip? They played a multitude of, of Italian teams over there. And as we're going to look at this, travel again, clearly a walk. 
But back to my question, how do you think that's going to help the Wolverines early this season? I definitely think it's going to benefit them, especially the freshmen who gained valuable playing experience playing with each other. When, you, when you're a freshman, you don't get a lot of game opportunities. Usually around November is when you first get your first action. But allowing them to get accustomed to John Beeline's offense, how he wants to play, is very important. And that Italy trip allowed them to do just that. That's a very important point. Most of these kids coming out of high school played under different formulas, different coaches, and most of them, if not all of them, were the stars on their high school teams. And these freshmen have to learn how to play with each other, play off each other, and contribute to a team style of basketball rather, rather than creating their own shot and such. Yeah, absolutely. You can do as much practice as possible to try to get that system down, but it's just nothing compared to when you're actually in a game, which that trip for, to Italy allowed the Wolverines to do get those players in positions where they can practice that offense instead of just practicing against each other in a non-game non environment. Absolutely, and the lights are turned on tonight, the first time these freshmen will be playing at the Chrysler Center in this exhibition game against Wayne State. Albrecht for three, no. Tipped around and Spike finds it again, tries to get it to his teammate Irvin. And gets it back into Lavert. That's an athletic play from Zach Irvin. Spike into the lane, no foul call. And it'll be Wayne State on the other end as Spike takes an extra second to get up off the floor. Great hustle all around there by Michigan on the offensive end. Spike Albrecht good and after it on the floor. Zach Irvin falling out of bounds to keep the possession alive. This is exactly what John Beeline wants to see out of this team, is all out effort to try to do anything. Even though the score is already 15 points, you see his starters going all out 100%, which is important here early on in the season. Michael Lewis can't convert on the lefty free throw. Mark Donna will check back in, replacing DJ Wilson. Lewis sinks to second, cutting the lead to 38-14. Just under 30 seconds left here in the first half. Albrecht, Irvin, Rockman, Lavert, and Mark Donald on the court for the Wolverines. Zach Irvin, Lavert, looking to take the last shot. Crosses up a defender, steps back, leans in, great floater from Karis Lavert. And that's going to end the first half. On a very good note for John Beeline's club as it, they hit 40 points and lead the Wayne State Warriors by 16 points. What are your thoughts, Derek? Actually, we're going to send it over to Danny Sabo, who has Coach John Beeline. Coach Karis Levert has received a lot of attention lately. How has his presence affected this matchup tonight so far? You know what, he's really a leader for us, and he's calming the young guys. We, I think we've rolled out five freshmen already, uh, really six, and he's just calming them down, and then he's fighting to fill it as his spots. He's not trying to get his. He's just really a, uh, a the, the, the li what little experience we have, he's got a bunch of it. You look a little frustrated out there on the court. What have you been telling your guys on the bench? I look frustrated? No, I think it's just we're all learning as we go along, so there's things we work on in practice every day. And what it really is, is once they play it in the game and they don't do it well, that's like perfect for us because now they see it in film. So it's really, I'm not frustrated, but uh, it's just part of coaching. And lastly here, what's been so key to your hot start out there tonight? Well, I think we, we have been very good defense. Right now they have 24 points at halftime. I, that's a number we're always looking at. If we can hold people at 24 all, all year at halftime, we're going to be in pretty good shape. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Andy, and John Beeline always trying to make his his players better as we see Zach Irvin take one to the house, Spike Albrecht take one out, and Derek, this has been a great first half for Michigan. It certainly has been. 
transition buckets have been the key for them getting easy layups. We're going to be right back to get into the second half of this game on the Big Ten Network. I would definitely see Michigan doing more of the same, especially early on in the second half. They have their starters out, so I look for more of the aggressive defense trying to jump the passing lanes, get steal. We saw, we saw Spike Albrecht get two steals just by stealing the inbounds pass. So it's that aggressive nature of defense that I expect to see here earlier on in the second half. Clark Bishop sets up the Wayne State offense, and they're gonna get a foul on Michigan. I believe that's Mark Donald into Nadondo. And Michigan's defenders have done a great job all night locking up Joel Ndondo, not allowing him any easy buckets. He's the big man in Wayne State that they will try to look to as we see him get this offensive rebound. He's the one that they're going to try to look to to finish around the rim, get put back buckets. But Mark Donald and Ricky Doyle have done an excellent job so far tonight, not allowing Nindondo anything. Except on that last play where Donald did not box Nindondo out. And they got an extra possession, but it didn't matter. Derek Walton pushing the pace on the other end. Chapman just inside the arc. Can't get it to go. Donald the rebound, puts it back up, and just misses a three-point play opportunity. Leading that transition, though, was Derek Walton, who got that rebound. Point guards rebounding is something that John Beeline likes to do a lot. Not have them leak out, but if they're able to get the rebound, they can push the tempo themselves, which allows their transition offense to be so much better. Donald sinks the first, and that's a very good point. Derek Walton did a lot of that last year and the year before. Trey Burke did that, and if you can have your swingman players run the court for you and your big man, which I think Donald, with good speed and good physical ability, is going to be able to do this season. If Walton can get those rebounds, the ball is going to get down the court that much faster. Absolutely. Donald and Ricky Doyle are both pretty athletic guys. Ricky Doyle comes in very similar to how Mitch McGarry did. The coaches rave about his motor just getting up and down the court. So if a point guard can rebound and outlet to those big guys leaking down the court, that's going to be so much more important down the road. Levert creates his own shot, misses. Out to Walton for three in the corner, no good. But second dance opportunities for Michigan all over the place. As Levert's gonna get called it for the reach in. Yeah, you mentioned those second chance points. We saw early on in the first half, John Beeline get on his team about the lack of rebounding so far in the second half. They're being very aggressive on the offensive and defensive board. So must have been, must have been a message that John Beeline delivered in the halftime dressing room. Clark Bishop swinging it over to Toma, Gavin Toma. He's gonna get called for a charge the third of the night by a third different Wolverine in Donald. Even the big man's getting on on the action on the defensive end. Derek Walton taking his time. Mark Donald dubbed a stretch big, takes the ball. At the top of the key most of the time in the pick and roll situations, such as this. Levert jump stops in the lane, gives it to his teammate Walton with eight on the shot clock. Maze Rage yelling it out. Three, Donald from near half court gets front rim and look at that. Zach Irvin with the long rebound and Michigan can set it back up. That's just absolutely killer on the defense. Playing 35 seconds of great defense, forcing a long-range shot from Michigan center only to allow an offensive rebound. A third opportunity for Michigan, and Derek Walton will be awarded two free throws. Seems to me that if you're Wayne State, you just can't have that happen. They're eventually going to get to the bucket, as you see here. Walton getting into the lane. He's fouled by Moore or another Wayne State player, you take your pick, but he deserves these two free throws. Yeah, Wayne State, very typical, good defensive teams as well as good rebounding teams. So head coach David Greer will not be happy with the way his team has been rebounding here in the second half so far. 
Walton sinks the first. Can't get the second. Bishop gets the rebound. Marcus Moore. Lewis. Bishop guarded by his old pal, Derek Walton. George Spencer and Lewis playing pitch and catch, and Lewis throws it into the Wayne State bench. It'll be Michigan basketball. Just a miscommunication on that last play. Yeah, David, and I just saw head coach David Greer yell to Michael Lewis to be smarter. He pointed to his head, saying that in this big moment, it's important to just focus on the fundamentals. That was just a careless pass that went out of bounds there. So Greer's message to his team is to just stay in the moment and make the easy pass instead of try to force anything. Lavert pulls up from the top of the key. Can't hit. It'll be Wayne State, Wayne State ball. It's a foul on the freshman Chapman. That'll be his first personal of the game. Donald hedging more. Corner shot, no good. And Walton's gonna push it again. Swings it to Levert. We saw the quickness there by Mark Donald to hedge out on that defender, to close out, but then also track back and get in position to make that defensive rebound. Great athleticism there by Mark Donald. Bishop over to Lewis, and he, there's the athleticism again as Donald steals it. It'll be out of bounds on the sideline as Levert will take it in after the end of this break. Yeah, great athleticism there by Mark Donald, and he's being rewarded for it by getting a breather on the bench, and we see Max Bielfeld make his first action here in the game here tonight. Bielfeld, the redshirt senior. Irvin backdoor, can't finish, but that was a nifty move. Bielfeld just inserted into the game, cleans up the layup. And Bielfeld's gonna be one of those players from Michigan this year who's gonna be battling to get in that first eight or nine guys that could contribute here this season. Him along with DJ Wilson are gonna provide depth at the four and five for Mark Donald and Ricky Doyle. So he could make an impact and it's gonna be important for him to progress all season long as he has throughout his career here at Michigan. Bielfeld. He's played the role of mentor for Mark Donald and Ricky Doyle during the spring, the summer, coming into the fall. And I think even if he's not an impact, impactful player on the court this season, in the locker room, he's gonna have a large presence. Exactly, Bakari Alexander actually mentioned today that Max Bielfeld is so much more important than being known as the player with the biggest calves in the nation, as so many of his teammates joke about him being. But he's a great vocal leader, both on and off the court for these young Wolverines. Levert up to Irvin with a head of steam and stuffs it again. <laughs> Athleticism all around. Zach Irvin with another dunk. Bishop can't get in the fall and Walton has some space and numbers and he flies in and he gets the roll. Three-point play opportunity, Derek Walton, who's very slow to get up. We're gonna take a look at this replay as Derek Walton flies from about the second hash mark, and he landed awkwardly on that hip. To my mind, though, Derek, that's just a really deep bruise. That was certainly a hard foul. Walton went up in the air, and just so much contact. Might have been ruled a flagrant foul because there was so much contact on that play. Seemed as if he was playing the man instead of the ball. Derek Walton's going to get a much needed rest as we see this again, and he fell hard. Three right back. And Derek Walton, as he's hobbling around, I think he's going to be back into the game to shoot this free throw, but clearly in some pain. 
Uh, he's going to be taken off the court, and he's going to head into the locker room. And somebody else is going to take this free throw for Walt. We'll do our best to keep you updated on this situation. But clearly, if Derek Walton has to be out for a considerable amount of time, that is bad news for John Beeline's club. Yeah, you hate to see one of your starters go down injured in the first game of the season. It's only an exhibition here tonight. So John Beeline will certainly be concerned over the health of Derek Walton. Gavin Tomo puts it back on the Wayne State end. Irvin left open, way too open, but he misses Draper on the other end with some numbers. Backdoor pass is intercepted by Albrecht. Over to Levert, how pretty is that? And Spike Albrecht showing Wayne State how the behind the pack pass is done. Gets the steal when Wayne State might have forced it there, and he goes behind the back to Karis Levert. Great finish from the Wolverines. Showtime here in the Chrysler Center. Bielfeld steals it, and here comes Levert again. Can't get it to fall, but it'll be another two free throws as Bishop's gonna pick up his fourth foul. We're gonna take another look at this. Albrecht gonna shovel it to Levert behind the back. Look at that. Can't get much better than that, Derek Heitman. Absolutely great presence of mind there by Spike Albrecht, just getting his head up, seeing where his trailer carries Levert was, and just leaving it for him perfectly in stride. Levert with the easy finish. Levert sinks to first. And Andy mentioned Clark Bishop, who exited the game with his fourth personal foul who played AAU ball with Derek Walton when they were 15 years old on the same squad that former Wolverines Jalen Rose and Chris Weber played for the Detroit Super Friends. And basketball fans around America know that New York is the mecca of basketball. Cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, and Boston are basketball-dominated cities with high-class NBA teams. And Derek, you're from the area. I want to know your take on where Detroit fits in this section. Well, Detroit's an absolute great producer of basketball talent. Just on that Super Friends roster was also NBA players Howard Isley, who played at Boston College before being drafted by the Minnesota Timberwolves, as well as Vashawn Leonard, who was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks. And in addition to just the Super Friends, the family is a great is a great AAU team as well. We're gonna throw it right over to Anna Sabo. Thanks, guys. Moments ago, Derek Walton landed awkwardly on the court and stood up, clutching his left quad. He, has, he received attention on the sideline from trainers before heading into the locker room with what they told us were to be cramps. His status to return tonight is probable, guys. Back over to you. If it's just cramps, Derek, there's no reason to put Walton back into the game. But that's a strange diagnosis is that this kid absolutely got pancaked, pancaked on the floor from that hit. Yeah, I wasn't expecting with this hard a fall as he took making contact with the ground that cramps would be the issue that would take him out of the game. But you're exactly right. No reason to risk further injury. Just sit him for the rest of the game. Michigan already has a comfortable lead. And in the first game of the season, you don't want to risk anything going forward. From the short corner, puts in his third and fourth points of the afternoon. And the crowd erupts as Derek Walton heads back to the bench. But as I was mentioning earlier, David, Detroit is a great producer of basketball talent. The family, the AAU team, produced guys like Draymond Green, Manny Harris, and most recently, James Young. So a lot of NBA players are coming out of Detroit, making it on par and just as competitive as the Chicago's and Los Angeles and Boston's that also produce such great NBA caliber talent. And the future, as we see on the court tonight, is bright for those programs as well as Marcus Morris picks the pocket of Karis LeVert and LeVert is forced to foul him. Zach Irvin showing his athleticism for the second time tonight. He stuffs one through the rim. 
56 to 31 Michigan Wolverines here in the exhibition game against the Wayne State Warriors. Ricky Doyle, the freshman, in for the Wolverines. Marcus Moore in the face of Irvin, can't get it to fall, in and out, point guard Albrecht. The rebound and pushing it the other way. Chapman, left corner, nothing but nylon. Cameron Chapman with his first three-pointer of his Michigan career. Yeah, we saw him be a little bit too long on his first two three-pointers early on in the first half, but that one, as you mentioned, nothing but the bottom of the net. Kevin Toma working on Spike Albrecht. It's gonna be a foul. As we look at true sophomore Derek Walton from Detroit, played all 37 of his career games here at Michigan, and he is a finalist for the Bob Cousy Award, a national recognized award for the top point guard in the nation. He is on that list with 36 other point guards in the nation. He is about set to check back into this game. Yeah, and as we see Derek Walton come back into this game, John Beeline talked about how he's going to be more aggressive with Walton coming into this year because he has a better relationship with the point guard after one year in Ann Arbor together. As a freshman, they both didn't know how their styles would react to each other, but Beeline feels like he has a much better handle of his point guard going into this year. And that's similar to what Beeline and Spike Albrecht's relationship was a year ago. Yeah, exactly. He allowed Spike last year to be more aggressive after that year of kind of getting to know each other, tinkering with how he's going to fit in his offense. He has coached and Derek Walton, and he has picked his brain for a year and a half now. And it has done wonders for this Detroit kids game. Yeah, Laval Jordan, just a great developer of point guard talent. He worked with Trey Burke tirelessly, allowing Trey Burke to be a th to come from a three-star high school recruit who no one was really excited about coming into his freshman year to a top 10 NBA draft pick and John Wooden Award winner as player of the year. So Laval Jordan's development of point guards, whether it be Burke or Albrecht or Walton this year, is definitely one of the reasons why Michigan has such good guards. I'd say that Trey Burke kid did pretty well for himself. I would say so, and, too. And now into the NBA with the Utah Jazz. That last play was a moving screen on Chuck Key. And the ball is now over to Michigan and Ricky Doyle. Moore knocked it out of bounds. Zach Irvin getting physical in the lane here. Can't get the bucket to fall, but he will be awarded two free throws. And that's a very good point, Derek. But Butler University, who now has a long, not a long, but a historic tradition of good basketball teams, was looking to hire Laval, who is their former star point guard, to be the head coach to succeed Brad Stevens, who did wonders for that program. And he chose to stay with John Beeline. John yeah, certainly, Draper. Certainly a number of coaches on John Beeline's staff, Laval Jordan, Bakari Alexander, and Jeff Meyer, all capable of coaching at the Division I level, but all staying here in Ann Arbor. They built a great program and a great foundation that many players from all over the country want to come to. So Beeline, as we look at this graphic, Wayne State shooting a measly 27.5% from the field. Beeline in the past two years has molded three-star recruits into NBA prospects in less than a year, I'd say. Does he have the firepower and the coaching ability to do it again? He certainly has the coaching ability. No matter what the players are in his system, he will develop them into great talent. And if you're a high school player, why would you not want to come to a school like Michigan? If you're under-recruited like so many of these players have been, you see John Beeline molding players like Tim Hardaway, Trey Burke, Nick Stauskas, guys who aren't heavily recruited 
into NBA first round picks. And John Beeline doesn't really focus on that. Just last week, he said, quote, lists are just lists when mentioning how those great NBA, those great high school recruits have molded into NBA prospects. He doesn't really focus on that, just develop each player to their max potential. Karis LeVert doing what he does best, getting to the free throw line. And that's a very good point. John Beeline, the past couple years, has recruited mainly out of the state of Michigan, the state of Indiana, a little bit out of Illinois. But kids this year, Cameron Chapman, Portland, Oregon. And we have Rockman from Pennsylvania. We have Dawkins from Palo Alto. People are coming from all over the nation from great programs to play in Ann Arbor, and that's a great testament to Belon. Wilson from the outside can't get it to go. Yeah, and you see a guy like Karis Levert, who wasn't very recru highly recruited out of high school from Pickerington, Ohio, actually committed to the University of Ohio, but decommitted after head coach John Gross left Ohio to take the coaching, the coaching job at University of Illinois. So he came to Michigan, and I would certainly say that that worked out well for Michigan and Karras. DJ Wilson mistimed his jump. Would have been another highlight-worthy play had he stuffed it, but he gets the layup. And Michigan fans happy to see Derek Walton, who took a tumble early in the second half back out on the floor, guarding his buddy, Clark Bishop. Bishop gets it stolen by Walton, and he pushes the pace. Lavert Wilson in the corner, can't get it to fall. Aubrey Dawkins into the game from Michigan along with Wilson, LeVert, Doyle, and Derek Walt. And looks like Michael Lewis stepped on the baseline. And Clark Bishop will set up the Wayne State offense. Reach in on Dawkins. It's his first foul. Excuse me, it'll be Wilson. His third personal. As we see DJ Wilson in the game alongside Ricky Doyle, two guys who could play the five or the four. Ricky Doyle and Mark Donnell are gonna rotate the majority of the time here at the center. Very different styles of play, however. Donnell is more of an outside oriented, faces the basket and a good outside shooter whereas Ricky Doyle's more physically gifted, back to the back, back to the basket, typical center who likes to back down, who's in great shape and can run the floor. So two different guys who bring two different things to the Michigan lineup. Gavin Toma drains a pocket three. It's his sixth point of the evening. Wilson, who plays on that right wing and then also the right post. Levert with 17 left on the shot clock. 5.45 left in the game. Dawkins, and that's his first three points of his college career. On the other end, Dawkins grabs the rebound. Levert, he had Wilson but couldn't find him. Into the lane, blocked. Walton, over to Wilson for three. Back to back pocket threes for the Wolverines. Great decision there by Dawkins. Had a, had a potential shot underneath the basket, but unselfish play, making the extra pass to the wide open DJ Wilson, who knocked it down from the corner. The hometown kid Michael Lewis drains a triple. Wayne State stretching its defense. Rockman in the game, along with Albrecht, Wilson, 
and Dawkins along with the senior Bielfeldt. A brand new lineup for John Beeline as Rockman fades away and can't hit. Gavin Toma to Clark Bishop. Michael Lewis from the same spot as he was earlier. Left-handed jumper goes for him. And we're gonna have a substitution. Chuck Key is gonna come in for the Wayne State Warriors. Looks like there's an injury to Tristan Wilson. Tough break there for Tristan Wilson, the hometown kid, played at local Ann Arbor Skyline, only a freshman. Interesting enough though, his father, Theron Wilson, played for Eastern Michigan in the mid 90s, actually was one of the best players in Eastern history, being fourth in scoring for the Eagles as well as the all-time career leader in blocks. And interesting enough, Lorenzo Neely, the current assistant coach at Wayne State, coached his father at Eastern Michigan. Michigan 75, Wayne State 41. And here is a Wayne State basket. We'll be right back on the Big Ten Network. Now, this is an incredibly special moment in Michigan basketball history. Austin Hatch is about to check into the game for Aubrey Dawkins, and Hatch has, to put it frankly, an incredibly inspiring story. When he was eight years old, he was in a, a plane crash, which the plane was flown by his father, and that plane crashed, and two of his siblings, his only two siblings, and his mother passed away in that crash. And then three years ago, his father, his stepmother, and he were in another plane crash, and he was the only survivor of that plane crash. He had to leave, relearn how to talk, relearn how to walk, and in three short years, he is on the court at the Chrysler Center in a Michigan uniform. Honestly, David, this is just such a chilling moment, just emotional all around. One of the best stories that I've ever heard, a kid who survived two plane crashes, losing all of his family members, to come back, as you mentioned, in three short years and be on the court in a Division I basketball game. John Beeline talked about it earlier in, this, in his press conference this week, that a lot of people say that, he, that John Beeline and the University of Michigan is doing a lot for Austin Hatch. He said it was the other way around. Having Austin Hatch's presence around this program and this team is doing the gift for the university. So it's not a gift to Austin Hatch, it's what Austin Hatch has been bringing to this university is the real gift. And honestly, this is just such a special moment. The kid gets up at four in the morning, works out at five. He does more to help himself and this university than any of his teammates. And that's right, Derek, you're absolutely right. It's a blessing to have this kid on this team. Rockman swings at the hatch. Every time he touches the ball, his teammates stand. DJ Wilson gives it to Doyle, who draws the lane and hits the pretty finger roll. John Draper with the left-handed drive. It's gonna be a blocking foul on Doyle. If this script is written correctly, Austin Hatch will get a shot on the last possession for Michigan. You can see it in the eyes of his teammates. Everybody wants this kid to touch the basketball. And you mentioned it, I don't think there is a better story in college basketball than Austin Hatch. And just the, the, the topping of such a great story would be him shooting the ball, making a basket as his teammates want him so badly to take a shot every time he touches it. You can see their eagerness. You can see how much they love this kid and how much he's really contributed to this team. So it would certainly be even better to already great story for him to, for him to get a collegiate shot. Here we go. 
18 seconds left. Edge has the basketball. Hounded by a defender. He's going to get it fouled. And this kid's going to get a free throw opportunity. You can hear a pin drop in here. Can't connect on the first, so I have one more. But the butt of the bucket, Austin Hatch has scored for the Michigan Wolverine. John Beeline is on his feet clapping. And David, I have chills going up and down my body right now. Such an emotional moment. Great class there by John Beeline to sub him out of the game, to allow him a standing ovation from the Chrysler fans. Great support and just a great story. Tremendous that he got that free throw. An incredible ending to a great night here in the Chrysler Center. The final is 86 to 43. Michigan over the Wayne State Warriors. And to wrap this up, Derek, what do you have for us? What is the story besides Austin Hatch tonight? Well, I'm still a little emotional from the Austin Hatch moment. To sum up a great night as Michigan be beats Wayne State 86 to 43. That is the final score as Michigan wins tonight for David Carlson, Derek Heidman, Annie Sable, and the rest of our Big Ten Sunyu crew. Good night from the Chrysler Center.